good football weather. And uh, all my teams are winning. One more to go this afternoon. I don't know if my teams are winning. So I'm full of joy today. And I think this being the Sunday after the election, especially for a petition, we, we pray for our country, we pray for our, our nation, for the health of the nation, healing needs to go on. We pray for uh, peace in our land, peace in our lives. We pray for uh, civil aid and, uh, and, and charity uh, amidst all of our disagreements. Let's not forget, one nation under God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. God, and praise the Lord, let's pause for the knowledge of our sins. You were sent to heal a contrite heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us everlasting life. Amen.
words, the other virgins came and said, Lord, Lord, open the door for us. But he said in reply, Amen, I say to you, I do not know you. Therefore, stay awake. Yesterday we had a visiting priest for the wedding. So I waited till after the wedding and asked the priest, Father Bernie, what are you going to preach on tomorrow? Now this is shop talk for priests. I hope you're not scandalized by some of this. But Father Bernie goes, oh, I'll worry about that Saturday night late. <laughs> so I come back and I said, Bernie, the readings here are all about being prepared. We'd be prepared. You're working on your homily Saturday night late for Sunday morning. And he goes, and it was a perfect back at you. Okay, he goes, the fact that you're asking me these questions, Jim, indicate you're not prepared either. So, <laughs> you're not ready for the homily either. So back at you. But I want to complete that conversation later on in the homily. That was an excellent back at you. The fact, Jim, that you're asking these questions, you're, you're not as prepared as you should be too. One thing I'm sure I never really ever shared with you when I was a younger priest, I was the Archdiocesan Boy Scout chaplain for about 10 years. When I was younger, as you know, I was a teacher, I was a football coach, uh, I was a chaplain. And the diocese thought I'd be an excellent person to, to deal with the, the, the Boy Scouts. And so I remember many a award banquet, many a talk on scouting, and many a campsite outdoor mass in the, in the evening. Is, Many of you know the Boy Scout model, as the sign says, is being prepared. Uh, that was crafted by Baden Payton uh, around 1907, who came up with the model. Uh, Baden Payton was his name. Uh, 1907, be prepared. And one time he was talk, giving a talk on that, and, and somebody said, be prepared for what? And he came back and he said, anything. A scout should be prepared for anything that comes your way, not be caught off guard, not be surprised. You should be ready to serve your neighbor at any time that comes your way. You should be ready to do what's right in any situation. So a true scout is always prepared, ready to do what's right in any situation. Huh? Physically fit, morally straight, ready, prepared to respond to any situation that comes your way and never be caught off guard or be surprised. And went, wow, that's, that's not true for scouts. That's, that's true for all of us. I'm sure many of you are aware of Stephen Covey's book, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, and that's the first habit of highly effective people. Being prepared, being proactive. Effective people are not reactive, they are proactive. So what Stephen Covey said is exactly what the Scouts teach by their motto, being prepared. Now, let me complete the conversation with Father Bernie a little bit, huh? because that's what the the readings today are all about being proactive, being prepared. First reading talks about the importance of wisdom in our life. Wisdom is a virtue that gives us knowledge, not from the textbook, but from the experiences of our lives. That's why wisdom is often related to being older, you got more experience. And wisdom is always learned, okay, by, by failure. A wise person learns the mistakes of the past, a fool does not. That's how you get wisdom from the experience of your life. And then we go to the gospel. And there were ten virgins. Five were wise, five were foolish. What was the difference? Once again, being prepared, being proactive. Huh? The um, five wise ones had enough oil. They're prepared. They're proactive. And the, uh, the, the, the foolish ones were, were not. Okay. So that's the word of God. And let's go back to the conversation with Father Bernie. Because it continued on. I said, Bernie, it's not so much that I'm not prepared. I'm really struggling with this gospel today in the midst of a pandemic. God is saying we've got to be prepared. We've got to be proactive. And I go, how in the world are we supposed to be prepared for this pandemic? That's what I struggle with all week long. You know, and I'm not getting into the politics of that question. I was on a deeper level, a spiritual level. And I took it to prayer, you know. And so not so much I was not prepared. I was struggling with that. There's certain things in life we can't be prepared for. How, Lord, 
Were we ever supposed to be prepared to handle this pandemic? It's not just about so much that one nation got it. The whole world got it. It's global. Lord, how could we ever been totally proactive prepared for that? As many of you know from your own prayer life, God does answer. <laughs> but often it's an answer we're not ready to hear, okay? Because God did answer me all week long. And what God was saying to me, the most global reality, Father Manning, that we need to deal with life is not the pandemic. It's our own mortality. That's the most global reality in the world. We're all going to die someday, and no one gets out of this world alive. So take it to a deeper level. The question is not be prepared for the pandemic. Is are we all prepared for our mortality? The fact we're all going to die someday. The whole month of November is devoted to that. Last week was All Saints. Monday, All Souls. On Friday, that Reverend All Souls message that died this past year. Please come. November says, please pray for our deceased loved ones. Visit their grave sites. Huh? The whole month of November is just devoted to that. And God answered my prayers in a surprise way. The most global reality we're facing is not the pandemic. It's the fact that we're all going to die someday. And we do not know the day or the hour. That we don't have to be prepared for. We can't be prepared for that. We don't know the day or the hour. But one thing we have control over is how spiritually prepared we're going to be when that day happens for us. And that's what God's saying. We do have control for that. We can be proactive. We can be prepared. We can't be prepared for the day of the hour. I don't know that. But I, want, I do have control over it. And I can be proactive prepared for huh, how spiritually prepared I'm going to be when that day happens to me and to you. So the real question is, if today will be the day when God comes knocking at our door to come and take us home to heaven, could we really say, I am prepared to leave this world and go home to heaven? And if we have to say, I'm not ready yet, then we're still alive, right? We've got some time to do something about that.
pray. Pray for those who are called to give us leadership in our lives and our, in our nation, and we support them with our prayers. We pray to the Lord. God, these are needs we have. We have the faith that you hear them through Christ. Since you only be 
God and Son to be our Savior. May He incarnate by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary. He shared our human nature in all things but sin. To the poor, He proclaimed the good news of salvation. To prisoners, freedom. And to the sorrowful heart, joy. To accomplish it, when He gave Himself up to death, and by rising the dead, destroyed death, restored life. And that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for Him who died and rose again for us. He sent the Holy Spirit to be Father, as the first fruits for those who believe that bringing to perfection His work in the world, He might sanctify creation to the full. Therefore, Lord, we pray, may the same Holy Spirit graciously sanctify these offerings, that they may become for us the body and the blood of your Son, our Lord and Jesus Christ. For the celebration of this great mystery which he himself left us as the eternal covenant. For when the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, Father most holy, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. And while they were suffering, he took bread, said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up. Gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory.
help of your mercy, we always may be free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory of Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I give you, my peace I give to you. Look now not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. And the peace of the Lord with you always. Let us all great other some sign of peace. From afar.
we make this prayer. And the Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, 